Today, we're talking about one of the most commonly asked requested services, which is the phase one environmental site assessment. And we're going to be answering the business case of why you need an environmental site assessment and also answering what it is, how much it costs, and a few other questions that people always ask. What is the common way to make sure that the commercial real estate property that you're purchasing does not end up being a money pit or lose significant value and risk you losing your investment? That's the phase one environmental site assessment. And the phase one environmental site assessment is a report that is an environmental review that covers the history of the site that you're purchasing. Because the purpose of the phase one environmental site assessment is to make sure that you're not being held responsible for past contamination on the property, as well as impact on your property from surrounding sites. The phase one environmental site assessment ensures that the moment you take control or ownership of the property onwards, that there's a clear and clean environmental history associated with that site. What are the rules that govern a phase one environmental site assessment? Well, the phase one environmental site assessment is modeled after the ASTM standard, and that standard is a 1527-13. And that standard lays out what are the sections of the phase one environmental site assessment, what are the con what's the content in each section, what are the things that they need to cover. So everything from the historical review, the documents that need to be reviewed, the site visit that needs to be performed, who can actually perform the report, what are the credentials that they need to have, and what are the different sections in each report is what's covered in the ASTM standard. Now, in terms of any other regulation, you know, simply put, there is no law that requires a phase one to be performed. The reason that it's done is because it's a risk management tool used by lenders to assess the risk level of a property. And that, part of the reason for that is because you go back to a regulation called the CERCLA regulation. And that CERCLA regulation was created because it, it needed to enact and create a way for commercial real estate owners that are creating contamination on their sites or their surrounding communities to be held responsible for paying for the cleanup and the assessment of that contamination. Now it's a federal regulation. Within the CERCLA reg regulation, there are some exemptions from that regulation. And that exemption creates what's called the all appropriate inquiry section states, is that if a new purchaser or a purchaser of a, new, of a commercial property does their due diligence in, in understanding the history of the site, and then they purchase the site, they won't be held responsible for the cleanup of that site. So essentially, they're being held responsible from the moment they purchase onwards, but not the historical contamination. But you can only qualify for that defense within the circle regulation by performing the all appropriate inquiries rule for which the phase one environmental site assessment is the most most commonly recognized method to comply with that rule. What's involved in the actual performing the phase one environmental site assessment? Well, as an organization, we break it down in three phases. The first phase is the data ordering and data package phase. We are ordering the data packages which combine and compile all of the national and local databases that this property will might fall under. If it's dry cleaner, there's a dry cleaner database. If it's a national, um, you know, polluted site, it'll fall on the National Polluted Site Database. So we usually use that database to understand what is, what is already known about this site in the public domain. There are companies out there that will be able to order these reports and aggregate them for a relatively minimal cost. That's the first step. The second step is we send out what we call records requests on the site as well. So depending on where you are in the country, the different agencies that oversee the utilities, the building permits, the fire departments, Usually they have some information on the site and that's what we're looking for. Was there ever an application submitted for an underground storage tank? Or was there ever a situation where they applied for a certain permit to use certain types of solvents or things like that? By submitting the records request, usually agencies have up to 30 days to return those records requests with any information they have on the site. So the first few days of the phase one environmental site assessment is really spent based on reviewing the information, sending out the records request and kind of creating a picture of what the history of the site has been. Then we get into the next phase, which is the site visit. 
The site visit is actually us going on the property and doing a visual reconnaissance on the site itself. Now, on a phase one environmental site assessment, there's never any sampling performed based on the fundamental definition of a phase one ESA. So when we're on site for a site reconnaissance, we're just assessing the site, visually walking through the different parts of the site itself and looking for any potential high risk concerns or high risk uses that may not be already uh, associated with the site itself. Uh, we're looking for any discolored soil. We're looking for any type of stained asphalt. We're looking for any type of unknown uh, debris piles or unknown liquids present on the site. We ask to be escorted through the site with the property manager or someone most familiar with the property. And before we show up, we'll usually have a questionnaire prepared to be able to ask our, our escort on the property itself. The third and last part of the phase one ESA preparation process is the actual preparation of the report. The report preparation goes into covering and summarizing all of the findings from the actual document review portion and the site visit. And we put that in a report format for you to read. The sections of the report are already highlighted and, and created by the ASTM standard. So it's a matter of making sure all the relevant information is inserted into the sections, as well as examining were there any exceptions to this phase one compared to the ASTM standard. The phase one report itself, the third phase, will include any pictures we took at the site, will include any documentation we received from ver various regulatory agencies, as well as a copy of the data package that we ordered as a part of the, the first part of the phase one environmental site assessment report. And that report itself is what can be submitted, will be submitted to you as a client, basically completes the requirements for the phase one environmental site assessment. The phase one environmental site assessment usually takes anywhere from two to three weeks. Now there's a lot of variables that go into the timing implications of a phase one environmental site assessment. If you have an 80 acre site and it's a very long history of the site, a very complicated site will take a little bit longer just because there's a lot of information to go through. If you have a very simple site that's a commercial real estate plot of land, that's a one site vacant land, it can be done relatively fast. Now, there's another implication of the timing of a phase one also is the records request portion. We always try to make sure that we receive the records request that we sent out to the various agencies within the time that the phase one is completed. If the transaction doesn't allow the timing to receive the records request back, then we just put in the report that at the time of the report, we did not receive the records request and as a result, this part will let you know once we receive it. But generally, that doesn't have a significant impact on the phase one environmental site assessment. Now, does that mean that you have to wait for two to three weeks to find out if there's any concerns with your property and you won't hear from us in that process? Absolutely not. What we do is we make sure that we keep you informed of our stages that we're going through in terms of the phase one environmental site assessment. So if there are any red flags that we see right out of the gate after the first phase, our team makes sure to keep you informed of that process. If there are any issues we see after the site visit, our team will inform you of that process as well. The last thing we want as an organization is to have you be surprised by our finding on the phase one environmental site assessment. You know, at Esalen Environmental, we're environmental experts, but we also are very familiar with the commercial real estate process. And as a result, we understand the implications of a uh, phase one that is, you know, let's say has environmental conditions attached to it. So we inform you during the process. So as soon as we see a concern, we will inform you of that and let you know this is what we found so that you can do what you need to do in informing other people involved in the transaction of the pending findings so that when you get the report, there are no surprises that you get in that report. The average cost for a phase one ranges between $1,800 to $4,600, depending on the couple variables. The first variable that's taken into account in, in pricing out of phase one is the amount of time that it will take to do a site visit as well as the amount of time that it takes to do an average report. If it's a complicated site where there's a lot of history related to the site and a lot of industrial uses, means that there's a lot more information to sift through in preparing the report, as well as a lot more information to go through when you're on site. Uh, phase one environmental site assessment that involves that level of detail or that amount of information will usually cost a little bit more. If it's what we consider to be a straightforward site, let's say a vacant land or a commercial property, that's been, that's been the same use for the, you know, to the earliest known history of the site, those are what we consider simpler phase ones and as a result will be a lower end of that range. Usually a $1,800 phase one is your run of the mill, two to three week turnaround commercial property. And sometimes the, as the price goes up, basically means you either 
need it back faster in less than that two week time frame, as well as the complication of the site or the size of the site impacts more time that's needed to be spent on the site. And that's how it impacts cost. If you found the information useful, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification to make sure you're informed the next time we upload a video.